Men of Reddit, what do you think would be the worst thing about being a woman? Story 1. I'm 5'1 and 120 pounds. It's terrifying to know that it would be easy for any man to hurt me if he wanted to. Just today, I went jogging and saw a guy in a pickup truck parked by the jogging trail. I immediately thought, if this dude wanted to throw me inside his vehicle like a bag of potatoes and rape murder me, he could do it easily. Then guys wonder why I ignore them when I'm out jogging. They want to have a conversation. Story 2. My mom has told me that she avoids running and other exercises. As a teen, she was a very talented gymnast who gave up the sport entirely, mostly because her breasts grew extensive and she no longer felt comfortable doing routines. Story 3. I see the bra compliment so often. Why hasn't a woman started a cute bras for big tits company yet? It seems easy money to be made. Kind of like the pockets complaints. But it looks like skirts and pockets dresses with pockets are starting to be made more frequently, at least. Story 4. Oh god, even the woman who wants to have it all shit when a successful woman has a family is grating. No one questions male CEOs, politicians, etc. who have families about how they juggle work and family. Like, why hold women to different standards regarding this shit? Why is it never expected of men to be more involved with their families and play an active role in raising their kids or running a home? I'm honestly so tired of hearing it. It's just another way to guilt women out of having ambition. Story 5. Having a fear of being attacked sexually. I was molested for the better part of my childhood till I was 11. Multiple cowards and sick people overpowered me. The fear of getting hurt worse for telling was always in my mind. When I finally spoke up, nothing was done. The family brushed it off because they said molesters were mentally disabled. Slow, but nothing drastic. The worst of said scum hurt over 10 children, boys and girls, dogs. He murdered pets and would make trophies of their corpses. And everyone in my family wrote it off as being retarded. He was the butt of jokes and people laughed off his crazy behavior. I'm 30 years old and I still have terrors and nightmares about my attacks. I'm so much of a man's man. Big beard, lift weights, and general guy stuff but I still cry when I read sad stories about abused children and women. I'll admit that the hashtag MeToo movement changed my life. I'll always admire and respect these brave women sharing their stories and standing up for a collective. As much as I would like to say I'm over my demons and have made peace, I just can't. My innocence and childhood were ripped from me, and I don't feel like I'll ever truly recover. All I can do is sympathize and understand the importance of speaking up to the right people. Help is out there if you seek it, and I've been blessed with a handful of people with whom I can share my story. Stay strong, ladies. Story 6. This is so goddamn frustrating. A male friend makes a pass and you decline. You're a prude or a tease. Try to gauge if a male friend is trying to pursue you sexually before anything has happened. You're a cunt for doing so and assuming the worst. So many times, men have offered to make friendly gestures for me, and at times it's obvious when they want to gain something from it but when it's ambiguous. Story 7. When dudes confuse being nice to them and having a crush on them. I'm gay. I've been with my girlfriend for five years, and I have no interest in dudes, but the minute I show any friendliness towards them, I always get the, hey, we should go out sometime comment. Holy shit, I had a Facebook marketplace sale last week and was friendly towards the dude, and homeboy messaged me through Facebook after saying he thought we vibed well and asked me out on a date. So dude, I sold you a printer. How much did we vibe over that? Story 8. I've seen the way some people ignore the opinions and concerns of women and chalk it up to that time of the month or even more nasty things. Much respect for the women in the business world who have to deal with much bullshit. Story 9. I'm 6 feet, just last month. At 32 years old, I wore heels for the first time and felt good about them. I always felt like I looked like a giant clown in heels. The tipping point was seeing other women around me, taller than me. Heels or not, walking confidently and looking like freaking goddesses, suddenly I realized the only thing they had that I didn't have was confidence. Story 10. When I was a kid, I got left alone in a car for a long enough period. I used to stress that I would get kidnapped, which in hindsight was a little bit of an overreaction. As a relatively tall and shaped guy who generally tries to know where he's going ahead of time, I don't even worry that much about that sort of thing if I'm walking alone at night through a sketchy part of a big city. Conversely, women worry about going to a bar with friends in the early evening. I never have to genuinely ask myself how far I'll have to walk to get to my car, whether I can get a friend to pick me up if something goes wrong, or whether the guy walking 100 feet behind me and my group of pals on the sidewalk at 9pm is going to try and hurt me. Yet women have to worry about all these things all the time. 
That's just so wrong. Story 11. A couple of weeks ago, I was jogging on a trail around 5 p.m. Turning around to go home, a guy a few hundred feet ahead stepped out from the bushes with his pants around his ankles, masturbating. I had to run by him to get home, and it pissed me off that we even have to worry about shit like that. I told everyone and most men I knew were fucking shocked, while the women were sympathetic and reminded me to call the cops so he wouldn't do it again to more people. It just makes me so angry. People like that are why women constantly live in fear. You think running on a trail close to a main road at 5pm is safe, but it's not. Story 12 When I'm running, and I see a guy or a group of guys ahead of me and have no way to avoid passing them, somehow I know they're going to be trouble. I had a group of teenage boys grab for me as I passed and joked about smacking my ass. Then they laughed as I sped up to run away. This was at night, and my husband was just ahead of me on the trail. He just passed them. Another time I was alone and had two drunk guys chase me. Again, it was broad daylight in a niceish residential neighborhood around 11 a.m. on a Sunday. I could hear their feet pounding on the pavement behind me, getting louder and closer, and I was so exhausted. I had already run 10 miles or so. My legs refused to speed up. The guys were laughing and yelling at me. I don't even remember what they said. Finally, they caught up and were on each side of me, and I saw one of them reach toward me. A car came around the corner and seemed to spook them. And finally, my adrenaline kicked in and I bolted but I still cried all the way home. It's so frustrating because my husband just doesn't get it. I know he believes me, but he doesn't ever see it happen. He doesn't experience it. He can't possibly understand it because it has never occurred to him and never will, at least not on the same level. It makes me so angry. Story 13. A few weeks ago, while I was out for a run, a guy followed behind me for over half a mile. And once he passed me, I turned a corner, looked back, and he turned around to keep following me. He eventually started calling me to stop so he could catch up to me again. And luckily, there were people around because I was tired and he was faster. But unfortunately, he was following me the whole time because he wanted to get my number. It was so, so creepy and just rubbed me the wrong way. So I called my fiancé to pick me up and I'd never seen him drive with so much focus as he was driving to get me. I wish all men could understand that even if their intentions are innocent, they can still appear sinister. Story 14 in general, women have in the back of their heads that a male partner could overpower them. Ask a bunch of men when they last thought about a female partner crushing them. The vast majority will never have thought about it or only thought about it in a that-would-be-embarrassing way. Story 15. I took an Uber home from work one night. The guy driving had a bowl of candy and told me to take one. I've known girls that have been drugged before, so I politely said no. However, he insisted that I take some, to the point that it freaked me out, so I scooped some up, didn't eat it, and said he could let me out there. I didn't start walking home until he drove off, and that candy went straight to the trash. Story 16. I had a friend who was shocked that I went around outside wearing shorts with very hairy legs, not in a disgusting way, but in a wish I could do that way. It's weird because I never really cared about that, or any significant political statement. I hate the feeling of smooth, shaved legs, but seeing how some women are so scared of being seen as gross and unhygienic for letting your body naturally grow hair is so ridiculous and hypocritical. 